So, uh, when did you start playing as a duo? How did your cooperation come to life? Mm. Well, it was already some time ago. Uh, two, three years ago, I think we started playing as a duo, but it was a result of uh, Dekus founding the Chroma Ensemble, uh, which a lot of friends were a part of. My brother, Sasha Violinist, was playing in the ensemble, and I joined a little bit later. And uh, then we thought, why not to try some duo recitals? And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in Brussels it's a really nice atmosphere for musicians to, uh, to meet. Meeting up point, yeah, for okay. friends and musicians. I think it's a really great place uh, to have as a base when you're a traveling musician. It's very central, it's a kind of community feeling and I think that's why a lot of musicians choose to stay in Brussels. Can you please tell uh, us a bit more about the Montpellier Festival? The Montpellier Festival is a fantastic occasion for musicians to meet both household names and younger people. It's a festival running in July with lots of genre, different genres of music from classical to jazz. Uh, it's really open-minded. I guess so. It's a very nice open-minded festival. Yeah, and we're do you think we need a bit of open-mindedness uh, for people to, to meet each other and meet styles? Always. 
Yeah, yeah, we do. And also classical music, maybe a little bit alternated to come closer to everyone, younger, older people. I think very often the genres are quite divided. Uh, more popular music, classical music, jazz, and I think it's only beneficial festivals which uh, include many different genres and are very accessible to the public. Yeah. In Montpellier Festival, I believe 80% of the concerts are free of charge exactly. for the public. And it's a really large scale uh, festival running through the whole month of July with about 100 performances with younger musicians, older, more established musicians. So. I think you really got invited, so it's really, it's your first time as a duo. Exactly, our door will do the premiere in France, in Montpellier, so we're looking forward to that. Very much. So, uh, the piece you're going to play uh, is uh, in commemoration of uh, Camille Saint-Saëns, who passed away 100 years ago. Yeah. And uh, why is this music so special? As a bassoonist, I can say that uh, Saint-Saëns Sonata is one of the few sonatas that is really established in the repertoire and it's really nice to play enjoyable moment. Saint-Saëns died 100 years ago and the bassoon sonata was the very last piece he wrote. So one can say a lot about his spirit and how he was in his mind. Actually, I think he was a very young spirit, a young guy in an older body. Yeah, this is a bit opposite to other composers. He felt young. Yeah. He felt young. We can see it in the very last movement. Very happy, childish. Some mm -hmm. people they criticize. They say as they criticize as a childish movement. Mm -hmm. Very happy. Yeah, and also he he really chose to write for the piano and the bassoon. So it makes you very happy because there's not a lot of real repertoire. At the yeah, end. that's true. Since us embraced the bassoon in the first half of the 20th century, and then after Poulenc took over and continued writing for our instruments. But he already wrote for piano, I guess. Well, he wrote a whole bunch of works, but I think it's only great that he brought not only bassoon, but the wind instruments a bit more in the forefront, yeah. as other composers have done beforehand with viola and cello, kind of bringing them up in importance. And there's something very touching about playing the absolute last work that a composer wrote before passing away. So, And it's a very special piece. So yeah. Very contrasting, as he said, very childlike, but at the same time very emotional and mature. Yeah. So it's very special. You can see the characters of Seth Sons, I think, in every single movement. Mm. Yeah, because he was he was a bit of um, an explorer, I think. He in many occasions, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's really nice for young people to come and listen to Seth Sons. Mm -hmm. So in Montpellier we celebrate, we will celebrate uh, this occasion together with other, the last three sonatas for clarinet and oboe and bassoon in one concert. And the theme of uh, this year's Montpellier Festival is celebration in general. So not only commemorating the hundred years of Saint-Saëns' death, but just also celebrating the return to live music and life in general. Yeah, because it has been difficult. Too difficult, too yeah, silent, yeah, yeah. no colors. Mm. Yeah. So you will celebrate being on stage. We would be happy. <laughs>
Yeah, and something special is being written for you. Uh, that's true. Um, it's very nice when once I, we go to France to play also French composer, maybe a living one, and then I thought immediately of Philippe Ersan, great composer, great human. I got in touch with him, and we talked a little bit if he would like to write something, and then he came up with the idea from the ancient Greece, from a tragedy based of a police, the Earth, and inspired by an old melody, the Lament of Tecmesa, he wrote a piece for solo bassoon. So it's really uh, an honor of tradition. An honor of tradition and celebration, as Lily said, for every kind of sense. For me, I'm very happy to, to go to the festival and bring also my culture as a Greek and then celebrate this in songs. And uh, next season you will be playing in Belgium as well and in Holland, I hear it. Yeah, we do have concerts in Brussels. In Mons. Antwerp. Antwerp and oh yeah, Antwerp also. Okay, Holland. that's nice. So we will be seeing you. Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you.